Okay. So we're recording. Let me share my screen and we'll do a little overview of. Um, oh, and let me also come back here. Come on. Uh, we're using the same um, Google Doc for uh, meeting notes for all of these sessions. So you can um, use that bit.ly to go and uh, pull up the notes for um, for today's session as well as um, all of the other sessions on Moodle Basics we're having this week. And as we go, I'll um, just kind of go through what I've got planned. Um, this is more going to be um, another one of these kind of higher level overviews just so that you're introduced, you're all introduced to these various topics. We won't take, we won't stop to take a lot of time to do hands-on work um, as we do some more focus workshops like on that interactive video um, uh, activity. We'll plan those around having more downtime during the workshop where you can actually get in and, and do the, um, the setup for the activities. But uh, for today, I just want to um, place this in the right context. So, you know, Monday's workshop was just kind of a real uh, basic orientation to Moodle, mostly for faculty who have, have not had much experience using it at all. Tuesday was about putting content in. Yesterday was about putting learning activities in today. Uh, in. Today I want to generally speak about uh, assessments, but what I'm really going to be talking about I want to start out by giving everyone an orientation to the gradebook, how to set it up, how to, um, how to make sure that uh, scores and other feedback are going in, is, is going into the gradebook. Uh, so we'll do that first. And then uh, we talked about assignment activities yesterday, but uh, I saved the discussion about how you would set up to use rubrics and grading sheets for today to kind of uh, fold that into this assessments kind of focus. We'll talk about grading forums, doing peer review, and maybe if there's time, um, just a few comments about secure uh, proctored exams. Uh, again, we've been trying to tie these workshops to our Moodle Foundations course, and uh, I actually need to take some time this evening to make sure that everyone who's signed up for the workshops this week is been added to the Foundations course. But um, again, let me uh, um, let me start off. Uh, with the Moodle gradebook. Actually, uh, if everyone um, could in the chat, just make a note of whether you have used the Moodle gradebook in the past or not. Because I know a lot of faculty find it intimidating, find it difficult to get started with. Um, let me just pop up in the chat, okay. Never used the gradebook, not yet, not used it. I use it regularly. Okay, so uh, I mean, hopefully for those of you who have never used it, then um, you'll find this, what I go through to be uh, enough to have you comfortable um, getting into the grade book and starting to work with it. And hopefully for those of you who have used it regularly, there'll be something uh, that you'll get out of it as well. I always kind of um, encourage faculty to, to email us at the TLTC, tltc at purchase.edu and say, uh, you know, I'd like to have a, a consultation on using the grade book. Um, those generally get kicked over to me. Marie's more comfortable with me doing those. Uh, but I, I, I find that, you know, there's enough 
differences as faculty, how we approach, you know, assessing our students and uh, thinking about how we want to uh, organize grades that these kinds of general workshops are useful, but it's uh, also useful to have, you know, time to sit down one-on-one -on -one and talk about, well, what actually um, did you want to accomplish with the grade book? In general, if you, if you don't use the grade book, um, um, I, we can work with you to make it so that it actually helps you as a faculty member keep track of grades. So that's one thing. But I think more important, uh, using the grade book uh, and getting, using it effectively and, uh, you know, having up-to-date grades in the grade book is just another way to provide feedback to our students to make sure that they're staying on track. If you've got the grade book set up to really adequate, you know, really reflect the kinds of activities that students will need to accomplish over the course of the semester. They can go into the grade book, they can see what they've done, how they've done on that, what they still need to do. That's just one more way to keep them on track and, and focused on, on the learning activities and the assessments that you want them to be working through. So uh, I'm going to take pretty much uh, uh, an old empty Moodle course space that I haven't used for anything else. So this would be kind of comparable to your fall 2020 course shells, which are, are up and, and available, but probably for most of you pretty empty at this point. And I'm, I want to run through uh, an orientation of the grade book, uh, sh you know, show you uh, the different uh, uh, tabs and views of the grade book, and then run through some, how you would set up some various scenarios which represent the bulk of the kinds of scenarios that I've worked with faculty uh, in terms of setting up their grade book. So, um, here I am in my field trip course, which we actually never used because we just had a handful of students who went out to Arizona with me on one spring break. Um, there are a couple of links into the grade book. Um, the administration block for your course has a link directly to the grade book setup. And I really like this because we, we regularly go into the course administration block to, to you know, look at our users, to edit settings on the course, uh, to do various other things. And, um, you know, the first thing you want to do with your gradebook is to work on the setup before you do anything else with it. In the navigation block, though, there is also a link. And your students in the navigation, their navigation block, would have a, uh, a link that says grades. This gets you into the grade book into uh, one of the basic views. And for the students, they only have one view of the grade book. They have their view of their grades in the grade book. Okay. I'm going to click on this grade book setup link in the course administration block. And uh, you can see that I'm in the grade book. I'm, I'm in here under grades, but I'm on taken directly to the setup tab. And on the setup tab, I'm taken to the grade book setup. Won't go through all of these, um, but just uh, later in the workshop, we will look at a couple of different ways to view the grade book. There is a greater report view, which sort of provides an Excel spreadsheet view of your grade book. You would have your students listed uh, in the various rows, and then the various items, grade items, and how you aggregate them listed as the columns in this sort of pseudo Excel spreadsheet kind of view. Um, initially, there's nothing in your grade book, so there are no columns to display other than a course total. Uh, so there's the greater report view. I find myself using it less and less over time. 
Uh, there is a single view that will allow you to focus on either the scores for a single student or the scores for a single activity. And I find that very uh, useful way to manually enter grades, for example. And then there's this user report view, which allows you to view the grade book as uh, any one of or all of your students. So, you know, if you're getting ready to have a, uh, a conference with one of your students, you can pop up, open the grade book and see what, how, how the grade book looks to that student. And then you, you're, uh, you know, have that available to you as you uh, are talking with them. Um, there is uh, import and export. Um, if you are, for example, using um, Excel maybe to keep track of some grades, you can very easily import information from Excel into your grade book or export from your grade book to Excel, vice versa. We won't take a look at that today, but I just did want to uh, highlight that a bit. Um, so uh, before your course starts, you should kind of I'd recommend you think about, you know, how, what are going to be the graded um, items for the course? How are those graded items? How am I going to think about putting those graded items together? And how do I represent that um, in my Moodle gradebook? So, um, I want to run through a couple of different scenarios, starting with very simple approaches to the grade book and then adding some um, different ways of working with the grade book that have some advantages, uh, but will build up um, slowly over the course of, I don't know, 10 minutes or so in the, um, uh, in the workshop. So uh, I've worked with a lot of faculty who basically uh, have maybe five things that they are grading and uh, the totals on those five things add up to 100 points and so basically all they want the grade book to do is to have a place where they can uh, record the scores for each of the students on those five things and um, have Moodle make sure that it all adds up to 100 points. So uh, how do we do that? So if you look at the gradebook setup, um, you can see um, basically what I like to call uh, one main bucket here. So this Mars analog sites field trip slash spring 2016 CRN yada yada yada. That's essentially just the um, name of your course. Uh, this, is, this, we will see that this is basically the big outer bucket that will represent the total course grade for the course. And by default, Moodle will set that main bucket up to be 100. You can think of this as, as 100 points. You could think of it as 100%. Uh, it re really doesn't matter. So uh, for that very simple scenario, let's, so let's say we've got um, two midterms that are each worth 20 points uh, toward that 100 and a final that is 25 uh, points, a uh, paper that's 25 points and course participation, which is 10 points. 20 and 20 and 25 and 25 and 10, that adds up to 100. So very simple, straightforward uh, grading schema. Uh, and let's say that, that, that these are all happening outside of Moodle. They're happening in our ideal face-to-face -face course that we will all eventually get back to at some point. Um, the way you would set that up um, in Moodle is, uh, well, first of all, let me, let me point out that associated with this total course grade, which is what is the, the label at the top of this bucket here, there is an edit menu. And one of the options is to edit the settings. And we won't look at all the settings here, but I just want to point out that 
the default aggregation on your overall course grade or any um, any course category that you add to your grade book, initially the default that Moodle will apply is this simple weighted mean of grades. So it is technically a weighted mean of grades, but the weights that are used for doing that weighting are just the total points of the items. So um, pretty much simple weighted mean of grades equals add these things up based on their point totals. Um, so um, we can just leave that. You can also see that down at the bottom of this bucket where it says course total, it tells you this is simple weighted mean of grades. So all of the items that I put into this bucket are by default just going to be added up. So that's this first uh, general scenario. So uh, these would be added as grade items. So I could click add a grade item, call this midterm one. And uh, because I want it to count as 20 points, I have to uh, make, sh make the maximum grade be a 20. And I'll click save changes. And now you will see that, oh, there's an item here in that bigger total course grade bucket for midterm one. I just kind of quickly go through and do the same for the rest of the items. Midterm two, again, 20% or 20 points. Uh, I said a final exam was 25 points. And a um, term paper, 25 points. And finally, I'll do participation. Participation, 10 points. So here you have a grade book. You've got five items in it. Um, each of them, oops, see, I didn't, um, I wasn't paying attention. Term paper should be also on a 25 point scale. And then, um, you know, sample student one is going to get some number of points between zero and 20 on the first midterm, between zero and 20 on the second midterm, between zero and 25 on the final exam, between zero and 25 on the term paper between zero and 10 on the participation. Because the course total now is simple weighted mean of grades, um, those five values for sample student one will be added up and it'll be some number between zero and 100. And let's say it's an 87. So then it's clear to you and to sample student one that, uh, that they got 87 out of 100. Same thing for sample student two, so forth. Uh, I was going to look, show the views later, but if we go into the, um, the view menu at this point and look at it on the greater report view, you can see this uh, kind of spreadsheet uh, view that I was talking about. You've got your students listed down here. You've got uh, the items listed across the top here. No value, no scores are added in yet, but when they do get added in, um, those will be added together for the course total. And then also um, the grade book is going to display the average for each of these items. Okay, so that's the greater report view. Uh, you can see that. Obviously, students won't see that. 
if you go into the user report view and um, select um, sample student three, for example, you will see, well, this is what sample student three would see. They would see the five items listed in the grade book. They would see their scores as they get added. Um, and um, there would be kind of a running total. Um, and that running total by default will reflect just the, the items that have been entered in um, so far. So um, actually it might be worth actually looking at the single view. So if we go to single view here, and so that maybe we do have, for example, grades for midterm one. I can select midterm one. And uh, you can see that got a place to put in like an 18 and uh, 15, and 19. And sample student four didn't do very well. And sample student five, uh, 17. Uh, and save those grades. You can also put in some short narrative feedback to go along with that. Uh, and I click save. If I um, go back here into the grader report view, you'll see that item number one, midterm number one has uh, values entered now. Um, there's the average. And if you go to the user report view and select, say, sample student three again, uh, sample student three will see that they got 19 out of 20 on the uh, first exam, the first midterm. And Moodle will provide a running total that by default will ignore all of these empty grades. So uh, as the semester goes along, the student can always look at their course total and get a feel for how well they're doing. Um, if we go back into the setup, uh, let me show you where that is set. Again, we've got the uh, you can see now we've got you know the big bucket here for the course total. We've got all these individual items the edit menu for the outer bucket here is here. We click edit settings uh, and expand all of these. If I click show more here, the default on um, grade categories is to exclude the empty, empty grades. So as, as I showed, <clears throat> If you just have scores in for the first midterm, um, Moodle will kind of give the student an inter an, a, a feeling in, or, or a representation in their course total about how well they're doing in the course based on the scores that are actually entered. I have worked with faculty though who say, you know, I want my students to start off with zero points. And as they complete, um, activities and they get scored, those um, points get added and I want them to basically um, start off at zero and work their way up to their final grade. If you wanted to do that, you could uncheck this exclude empty grades and anything that's not entered yet would uh, be treated as a zero. Um, that's not my philosophy, but you know, I, I'm pointed out because uh, I have I have worked with faculty who who go that who uh, who want to do that way. Um, okay, so this is like I say, this is pretty much the simplest approach to the Moodle gradebook that I can think of. There are X number of items; they each have a point value, and all you want the Moodle gradebook to do is to add up the points uh, for those items for each of the students. Um, I have worked with faculty who say, well, you know, the first, well, let me just point out, 
personally, I would not necessarily want to be constrained to have uh, my midterm one be forced to be, it's got to be 20 points so that this grading scheme adds up. I've worked with faculty who say, you know, I've got three exams are each worth 100 points. Uh, there's a paper that's worth 150 points, so that's 450, and there's 50 points for um, uh, course participation. And uh, I tell my students uh, I'm figuring their total score out of 500. You would do basically the same thing. You would leave this as simple way to mean of grades, but if you go into the edit menu for the overall uh, grade category, uh, you do not have to have um, the maximum grade for the category total to be 100. You can make it be 500. And then, you know, you would want to change these corresponding because currently these don't add up to 500. Uh, So let me do take a little bit of pause there. Um, I mean, we basically have treated this very simple case and we've actually looked at um, a little bit of entering grades and what some of these different um, grade views look like. Are there any, any questions that uh, come up at this point? Uh, Keith, question in the chat about can the total be adjusted later if assignments are added or canceled? Uh, it can be. Um, we maybe want to look and see exactly what you're doing because you, know, you could, um, you could, for example, change the. Um, maximum grade on midterm one, but I already have uh, scores in, you know, based on 20 points. But if I, you know, added um, a third midterm that was also 20 points, could I make this be 120? Uh, yeah, I could do that. And then these would add up uh, to a total that would be out of 120. Uh, so yeah, you can do that. Um, you, uh, you always can. You know, make the change, look at the scores for a particular student and say, you know, are, are these making sense? This is not, this is a simple case, but this is not necessarily the way that I would um, set up my grade book. Um, I would not necessarily want to be stuck to have, you know, midterm one has to be 20 points, midterm two has to be 20 points, the final exam has to be 25 points. I may want it to be 20%, but I don't want to have to score the exam out of a 20 point scale. For that, you would uh, want to start to incorporate um, weighted means. You want to be able to enter items into your gradebook and score them all out of whatever point value makes sense for scoring them, but still be able to tell Moodle, I don't care if that midterm one is 100 points or if it's 87 points. You know, I oftentimes have a midterm where I've got a certain number of short answer questions. Some of them may be four points, some may be six points, some may be five points. I may have uh, an essay, a short essay. I might have, you know, maybe I have 18 multiple choice questions. And so my, uh, my exam might be out of 87 points. And, but I still want Moodle to make that exam be 20% uh, of the grade. So uh, if you go to the settings for your overall course design, uh, course total, and click edit settings, you can switch the aggregation method from simple weighted mean of grades to uh, weighted mean of grades. And if you do that, then 
Um, then you have a new set of uh, fields here where you can put in what the weights are. So I want midterm one to be 20% of the grade. I want midterm two to be 20% of the grade. I want the final exam to be 25% of the grade. The term paper to be 25% of the grade and the participation to be 10% of the grade, 10% uh, of the grade and save those changes. Now it really does not matter what the maximum grade is on any of these items. I could, maybe it's midterm two that I wrote and, and made it out of 87 points. I could change the maximum grade there to 87 and click save changes. And it does not matter that, you know, sample student four, uh, the score is 83 out of 87. Uh, whatever that percentage is, that will be applied to 20% of the grade for the course. So, I mean, I, I've, um, I've worked with faculty who say, no, I mean, I, I have to have this item be 45 points because I'm trying to get everything to add up to 500. And, um, you know, I, I, I think, well, if you, would just uh, you know be able to use the weighted means, then you have much more freedom for how you can treat this. And so, you know, maybe I want to grade the term paper out of a hundred point scale. Um, you can change that to a hundred, not a thousand, and click save. And I can read through the term papers and I can say, oh, this is an A paper. I'm going to give that uh, student a 95 out of 100. I'll enter the 95 out of 100. And that score will make up 25% of the uh, total score for the student. Okay, so uh, again, we're starting off with the simplest kind of, of uh, arrangement. It's uh, that I've got these five items, I'm adding them up, I'm getting a, a, a total of 100 points, and it's a very straightforward uh, display in the gradebook, but very constraining for you as a faculty member. So let's add the ability to do uh, weights on the items so that you've got more flexibility with what the maximum grades are on the items that you're going to put into the gradebook. So that's, um, you know, that's this kind of, uh, this case too of using weighted means. Uh, I think it's a fairly typical situation where um, in your syllabus, you probably have to, uh, laid out what the grading schema for the class is. And it might be something like, um, Quizzes are going to make up 20% of the, of the uh, grade and there's going to be a midterm and a final and a paper. Uh, and, you know, I'm not, I don't know at the beginning of the semester if I'm going to have eight quizzes or 12 quizzes, if, is there going to be a quiz every day or um, we're going to have quizzes on some days and not on others, or maybe we'll have a quiz in Moodle. Uh, but all of, all of those together are going to make up 20%. So what I want to do here is to um, add another, um, I don't want to say complication, but uh, another level of um, flexibility to your uh, gradebook setup. And... Um, that is to not just add individual grade items, but to add a category. So if I tell my students in the syllabus, there are gonna be quizzes. Some of them are gonna be in class. Some of them are gonna be before class in Moodle. I don't know how many of them there are gonna be, but altogether they're gonna make up 20% of the grade. I'm gonna need a bucket inside this big bucket where I can stick all of the quizzes. And that's what adding a category is all about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say we've got one midterm. Uh, so I'm going to call this uh, just plain midterm. 
and uh, I'm going to click Save Changes there. I'm going to get rid of this grade item where I put in the scores. I'm going to, to delete it. And um, I'm going to add a category. And I'm going to call this uh, quizzes. And um, I'm going to click Save Changes. Now we've got um, this smaller bucket inside the bigger bucket. And I'm pretty compulsive. In my syllabus, I list quizzes first in the grading schema. So I'm going to move this up to the top by clicking on the little let's move this item icon and then clicking on where it's going to be moved to. And now I've got a bucket where I can um, add the quizzes as grade items. So I could add uh, quiz number one. And maybe that was an eight point quiz. And I want it to be in that quizzes bucket. And I click Save Changes. Now inside this quizzes bucket, I've got a, a quiz number one grade item. Do the same thing with um, quiz number two. And maybe it's going to be a 10 point quiz and I'm going to click Save Changes and I just made a mistake. So what was the problem here? This quiz is not inside that bucket because when I added it, I didn't, you know, specify that it was going to be in that category. I could move it the same way I'd move the other one or I could select the item over here and move that selected item into quizzes. And um, but now now quiz number two is listed up on top of quiz number one. And again, I'm a pretty compulsive guy. So I'm going to move quiz number one on top of quiz number two. Okay. So it does not matter. You're not constrained at the beginning of the semester to say, well, okay, I've got to have eight quizzes because each of them is going to be five points and those eight uh, quizzes times five points is 40 points and that makes up X percent. You now have a category that is 20% of the grade and you know the semester can just proceed as it proceeds and you can decide on the fly how many quizzes are appropriate. And if you end up with 13 quizzes in this bucket, doesn't matter, they'll make up 20% of the course. If you end up with eight, it's the same 20% of the, of the total grade. As, well, as long as I say 20 points here and uh, save that change. So whatever quizzes are in here make up 20% of the grade, the midterm is 20%, the final exam is 25, the term paper is 25, and participation is 10. So um, just quickly, these are all things that I've added manually to the grade book, but let's say that I want to um, have students take a quiz um, in week three. So uh, we went through the process yesterday of adding questions uh, to your course and um, creating your quiz activity. Just gonna very quickly say, I already have questions in the question bank. I'm going to add a quiz. I'm going to call it quiz number three. Um, uh, under grading, I'm going to say it needs to go into the quizzes category. I'm going to give students two attempts at it. And um, and I'm going to 
Oh, uh, I'll show you where you specify how many points it's going to be. So it is a, uh, it's quiz number three. It uh, is in the quiz category. They get two questions, uh, two attempts at it. I'm not going to bother with any of this other stuff. And I'm going to click uh, save and display. There aren't any questions, so I can go click on edit quiz. So this is a brief review of a little bit of yesterday's material. I'm going to add random questions, 10 of them from uh, the igneous processes and rocks category that I set up. And um, I'm going to make that quiz 10 points. Now, if I wanted to make that quiz some other point value, like 15 points, I could save that. And now if I go back to look in the gradebook under gradebook setup, you see I've got quiz number one and quiz number two that I added manually. These are obviously are quizzes that are taking place in class. And uh, because quiz number three is a graded item, Moodle puts it into the gradebook. And because I told it to be in the quizzes category, it's there. So now we've got these three items that make up 20% of the grade. Uh, same thing, you know, if we wanted to um, do the uh, final paper as either a Turnitin assignment, uh, you know, turn it into assignment, or uh, let's just make this a, a regular Moodle assignment. I'll click add, call it uh, final exam. You know, you can put in the description, you can say when it's due, all of those things that uh, we're not going to worry about. By default, the, the um, grade is 100 points, and for the um, not final paper, uh, final exam, final paper. Um, maybe I want to grade the papers out of 100 points, so I'm just going to leave that as is. And I'm going to click Save and Return to Course. And if we look at the gradebook, um, we're now, I'm now collecting the paper as a Moodle assignment. I actually don't need this item, this manual item in the gradebook anymore. So I'm going to delete it. And I'm going to make that final paper 25% um, percent of the grade. So, uh, I mean, basically you want to look at the grading schema that you lay out in your syllabus, figure out for those top level things, do you specify percentages for each of those top level things? You know, are quizzes 20% of the grade? Is the midterm 20%? Then I would add those in as the top level items in your um, grade book, switch the um, overall grade calculation from simple weighted mean of grade to mean uh, to weighted mean of grades and um, put in the weights that correspond to the percentages that you've laid out in your syllabus. And you can uh, manually add items that you are doing outside of Moodle or you can add graded items in Moodle like the quiz or assignment activities and have them be part of your gradebook as well. Um, so we, we looked at simple weighted mean of grades as the default. That's kind of like add things up. Weighted mean of grades uh, gives you the power to tell Moodle this is 25%, this is 10%, this is 25% and so forth. The other aggregation method I just want to take a minute to highlight is uh, mean of grades. So between simple weighted mean of grades, weighted mean of grades, and just mean of grades, you've got 
three different ways to uh, lump, to combine scores together. I may have quizzes in this bucket and they all are different point values, but maybe I want each one of them to count equally. You know, this eight point quiz is not less valuable than the 10 point quiz. It was just easier for me to grade it on eight points than 10 points. If I go in to edit the settings on the quiz category, I can change the aggregation method from simple weighted mean of grades to mean of grades. And that mean of grades basically says, treat everything in this bucket the same, even if they have different point values. Each of them counts exactly the same amount to the category. There are other, I mean, there might be a time when um, you're creating a category where you've got maybe two different activities and the students are going to get credit for one of them and uh, you select, you know, whichever activity the student has the highest grade on, um, you know, assign that to the category. But mostly what I find I use is simple weighted mean of grades. Again, that's let's add things up. Weighted mean of grades means Moodle, I'm telling you how important each one of these items is. And mean of grades is basically, even if the items have different point values, Moodle just treat them all the same as equal contributions to the category. So if I make that change, I'll see here that for the quizzes category, it's 20% of the total and it's mean of grades. So even though this quiz is on a 15 point scale and this quiz is on an eight point scale, they count the same. Okay. So Pete, uh, will uh, the uh, Moodle do all those calculations you know, of the points, turning them into percentages? Yeah, so uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm not going to take the time in the workshop to actually fill in point values for all the students here, but yeah, basically if we went to the view uh, item and chose one of the students in the user report view, um, you know, it, the student would see what the scores they got out of these uh, point values for the three different quizzes, and maybe they're getting an 87% uh, overall on the quizzes, and then they got, you know, the different point values here. Um, they would see uh, the percentages that they got out of what was total here. They would see how much each of these items or categories was contributing to their grade. Right now, they're all empty, so they're not contributing anything to the total grade. Uh, as you fill in parts of these, you know, if you've got the two quizzes in and the midterm, uh, there will be a um, in-progress kind of grade displayed down here at the bottom. So, uh, you know, it may take a little while to get used to the Moodle grade book, but it's a good way for you to organize the scores as long as, you know, you've got um, grade items that uh, are easily handled as numbers, but it also gives the students this ongoing feedback. Um, so uh, there's a lot that we're not obviously not going to get to cover today. I do, I think, want to show you how to use rubrics and grading guides on assignments because I've, I've got an assignment in here. We've got this final paper. Um, by default, when you set up a Moodle assignment, um, and you look under the grade category of settings, the default grading method is simple direct grading, which means this is a 100 point item. I read through the paper and I give the student a 95 or an 85 or an 87 out of 100. Um, if you want to provide more structure around that grading and assessment experience, you can use either a rubric or a grading guide. And um, 
let me show you how you could set that up. So let I may have a rubric that I give out to the students. Here are the here are the criteria that I'm going to be judging your papers on. Uh, here's the relative importance of each of those criteria, and here's what I'm looking for uh, in each of those rubrics. Um, so if we select rubric and click uh, save and display. We've told Moodle that this uh, assignment activity is going to, should have a rubric uh, attached to it, and it doesn't. So um, you have the option of um, drawing on various templates, but let's just do the, let's create a new rubric from scratch. I'll click on that and um, you know, call it something like final paper rubric. And the way the rubric works is you can define various criteria. By default, you have to have at least one criterion and it has to have at least a, a couple of levels. And um, so one thing where my, I might be judging the paper on is, uh, you know, content um, and uh, you, know, uh, you can be much more descriptive on these levels in fact you should be much more descriptive on the levels in the rubric if it's going to be useful to you and to the students um, you can each criterion can have different level, different numbers of levels, and they can have different descriptors, and they can have different points assigned. So, you know, I might have um, excellent be, you know, five points, good be four points, which would be kind of like 80% out of this content, and fair would be maybe three points. And instead of poor, I'll just say missing. Although if the whole content of the paper is missing, then there's no paper, but just for il il illustration, I'll say missing and zero points. I could add another criterion, you know, logical arguments. And uh, by default, the criteria are going to inherit what you have above, but again, you're not restricted. You can, you can make this um, out of a four-point scale and um, have different descriptors. And you can add another criterion, um, uh, uh, citations appropriate. And maybe that's a yes or no. So you only have um, two levels. They either used APA style or they didn't. And uh, no, APA. So you can define as many levels, uh, as many criteria and as many levels and assign whatever point values and descriptors you want to those. And then when you're ready, you save the rubric and make it ready. Uh, except it's going to require me to put in something here. Uh, and say save the rubric and make it ready. And then when you go into grade, we looked a little bit about, uh, in, about grading um, assignment submissions last time, but now because there's a rubric, you go in and view all submissions. Um, you can, uh, obviously none of my fake students have submitted anything, but I'm going to be a, a, a bad instructor and I'm gonna grade sample student for anyway. And, um, what uh, you will see is um, you, you, can, you could read sample student four's paper. You could say, well, uh, good content, um, decent logical argument, uh, used APA style. You could uh, add some additional comments on the, the individual criteria. Uh, you know, I liked the argument you made.
about, you know, whatever. You can still provide overall feedback on the paper, but now there is no field for you to put in, you know, 87 out of 100. What Moodle will do is say, okay, well, we have four out of five points here. We have three out of four. We have three out of three. That's 10 points out of 15. Is that right? No, 10 points out of 12. So that's, I don't know, about an 80 something or other percent. And so if I click, um, yeah, I need to bring this up. If I click Save Changes, let's not notify the fake student. If I click Save Changes, then um, Moodle will record uh, what I used on the feedback. And that turns out to be 83.33 out of 100. So, I mean, if you do have the, the rubric set up, um, you can use it to look at the paper, quickly go through, check, 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 provide some feedback, and based on the rubric, uh, Moodle will take your, um, take your selections on the rubric and convert that into the uh, relevant uh, grade out of 100 points. I find it very um, labor intensive to define uh, all of these different levels uh, for the criteria. So I tend to use more um, regularly, let me add another, um, let me add another uh, ac assignment activity here. And this will be the last thing we, we touch on today um, to replace the, um, uh, final exam. You know, because I'm teaching remotely, I'm not going to give a multiple choice high stakes exam for my students. I'm instead going to do more of like an open book take home exam. I'm going to, um, you know, uh, set up a Moodle assignment activity that um, asks them to you know, provide some analytical responses to a number of open-ended essay questions. Um, and again, I'm going to just leave that out of 100 points. But under grading here, instead of simple direct grading and instead of rubric, I'm going to select grading guide and click save and display. Again, Moodle will tell me, oh, you've You've selected an advanced grading option, but you don't have a grading guide attached. So please attach one. Looks very similar. You again um, define different criteria. You can uh, label what those are. You can actually here provide a description for the students, what you're looking for here. And if you've got multiple graders, which you can set up uh, in your Moodle course, you can just uh, provide a description to the graders. And now instead of defining different levels, you just define a maximum score. So criterion one is going to be kind of important. So I'm going to provide 10 points for that. You can add another criterion. Again, description, description, and maximum score of five. And you could, again, have as many of these criteria as you want. And now if I go into, um, you know, grade one of my students who hasn't had a chance to submit anything, instead of, um, you know, crap. Uh, you would have, uh, you'd be able to see the paper that the student submitted. You would, as the grader, see what the different criteria are and what they're about. You have the ability to provide feedback comments. And now you can give students, you know, 7.5 out of 10, or let's just give this an 8 out of 10. 
and um, four out of five. I find developing a, a grading guide or a grading sheet a lot simpler than defining rubrics with all of the you know predefined levels, and it gives me a little bit more flexibility of uh, you know exactly how between zero and ten I want to give that student a grade. Again, I can still provide overall comments, and if I click uh, Save Changes, then uh, I see that you know here here are the comments that the students are going to see, and here's the grade that shows up in the grade book. So there's a lot of other, uh, clearly a lot of other assessment uh, feedback kind of topics we can talk about. And I will spool some of these off into other individual workshops that will be scheduled throughout the summer. But I, I really did want to spend a fair amount of time talking about the grade book. And so, you know, as you are working on your classes for the fall, um, there, there's not a specific grade book assignment activity in the Moodle Foundation's uh, certificate course to follow up on, but I would uh, ask you all to, um, once you've had a time to think about your Moodle grade book, it, you may, we may not have to spend a lot of time, but you know, do get in touch with me f uh, to, so I can you know, provide some of these one-on-one -on -one consultations with what you want to do. And um, you can also use rubrics and grading guides in Turnitin. We won't have time to talk about that. I'll have uh, workshops on peer review and grading discussion forums and so forth. Um, We've had workshops in the past on using uh, secure proctored exams. Uh, interesting sessions today uh, about uh, 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 at, in the SUNY Remote Teaching Institute about um, you know thinking about some alternative uh, authentic assessment approaches. You can certainly use um, these respondus tools, the lockdown browser and monitor to do secure proctored exams. Just realize that those provide um, or um, not provide, but those result in, you know, technic technological burdens or um, hoops that students have to go through and not all, all of our students have the technology in their home environments to necessarily you know have a webcam on while they're taking their exam there are ways you can set up uh, the Moodle quiz activity in terms of randomized questions randomized presentation of answers and multiple choice questions timed tests you know different versions of the exams for different students based on drawing random questions from question pools that can provide a fair amount of exam security without imposing these technology restrictions. Or um, as was mentioned in one of the uh, webinars today for the SUNY RTI, maybe your best approach is just to, if you're going to have a non-proctored relatively high stakes exam um, to be the culminating experience in your course, just assume from the beginning that it's going to be, you need to treat it as if you're writing an open book exam. Focus more on not can students recall specific pieces of information, but can they show you that they can uh, critically analyze and apply the principles that you've covered in your class to uh, an understanding of you know whatever you're posing in the question. Um, so uh, again we'll probably have some follow-up uh, workshops later in the summer thinking about some of these different topics. Um, uh, but again we're a little bit over time. Um, if you have questions uh, about any of these, you know, setting up rubrics, if you're interested in using Turnitin, but you want to use rubrics in Turnitin, 
um, you know, email us at tltc at purchase.edu and we can walk you through how to do that. Um, if you are wanting to grade discussion forum activities in your remote or online class in the fall, um, there are some different things to think about. So again, look for either a workshop later in the summer or email us at, and, and we can get back to you. So at this point, I think I will, I think I'll stop sharing. Um, you know, many of you have not, had not used the grade book before. Hopefully you will be more comfortable in thinking about how you could use the grade book. It has a lot of advantages for our students and, uh, and for you. And again, as I, as I say, um, you know, as, as follow up to this workshop, please do email us and set up a consultation with me to, um, to talk about how you might use the gradebook or some of these other assessment tools. And uh, I'll use that as a way to, um, you know, trigger uh, a badge for this workshop. Before everyone leaves, please do uh, just put a comment in the chat again so that uh, I know that I've got a record of who was here. And um, I know many of you will also be joining us tomorrow afternoon for the last of these Moodle Basics ones. And I know if it's been a long day for you, but it's been a long day for me. Oh, let me stop recording. I didn't need to record all of this jabbering.